back to answer every question I saw in the comments, so let's get started. Someone wanted to know, how big is the box? 20 inches? 13 inches? 4 inches. Here it is next to the Legacy Megazord, exactly the same height. It would be the exact same box if you took this and pasted it over here. Everything else is the same. <laughs> is it gonna be the same deal with Titanus? Almost. It's actually just under 20 inches. Titanus is seven, this is four. The front of the box is very pretty. It has the golden foil, very shiny, where it says Thunder Megazord. Who doesn't love shiny? Here's the top of the box. Here's the back of the box. Five Thunder Zords can morph together to become the Thunder Megazord. There's Red Dragon Thunder Zord, who also has his warrior mode. Lion Thunder Zord, Firebird Thunder Zord, Unicorn Thunder Zord, and Griffin Thunder Zord. It has metallic paint and die cast parts. Combine the Assault Team and the White Tiger Zord to create the Mega Tiger Zord. Sold separately. The secret of the Power Zords. The Mighty Morphin Power Ranger's second Megazord formation is created by combining the five Thunder Zords. With the power of thunder, the original Dinozords are morphed into the Tyrannosaurus Red Dragon, the Mastodon Lion, the Triceratops Unicorn, the Sabertooth Tiger Griffin, and the Pterodactyl Firebird. Together they become the almighty Thunder Megazord! And like they used to do back in the day, they do give the Thunder Megazord stats. Length, 380 feet, width, 147 feet, height, 203 feet, that's taller than me, weight, 510 tons, that's also more than me. And speed, 93 miles an hour. I would have said 94, how about you guys? Ooh, there's a story. Determined to rid the universe of the Power Rangers once and for all, Lord Zed has an arsenal of monsters inspired by earthly plants and animals. <laughs> to battle these new villains, the Power Rangers are entrusted with new powers, new Thunder Zords, and joined by the powerful White Ranger, who is armed with Saba, the Talking Tiger Sword, and the Mighty White Tiger Zord. Go, go, Power Rangers! And then on the bottom, it shows the contents of the box. And that is it. Next, here is the Thunderzord Assault Team's sled. Here's the bottom of it. The original version had wheels, which sort of locked in place on Tor. Tor had indents that the wheels would sit in. This doesn't have them. There are these, like, slits right here. I don't know if that's gonna be for anything. I don't know what those are for. And here's the other side. Here is the handle piece, and that plugs in, plugs in there, like that. And then here is this piece, which actually does have a spot on the sled. It does peg in like that. Okay, now what does this piece do? Here we go. You take this piece, and this plugs into the lion, right here. And then that is how you attach him to the tiger sword. Without this piece, you cannot combine him to the tiger sword. That's how you do it. Oops. And there you have it. And then when you're not using it, it does stay in there pretty well. There are two pegs here and here, and then you just line up the indents like that, and then there you go. All right, somebody wanted to see this combination. Here is Dragonzord with Mastodon, Tigerzord's arms, Lion's arms up here, and the Thunderzord legs, Unicorn and Griffin, and of course, Firebird Thunderzord up here. The Legacy line does so many really unbelievable, so many amazing things, and then you have some things where you're like, why did they do that? Like. Why are two of these legs uneven, right? I don't know. Like, why can't this stand up by itself? It should be able to. But then you have these other things, like the Dragon Zord's tail, which is unbelievable, and silver and painted and all that. But what they do well, they really do well. But there are a handful of things that you're just not sure why they did it that way. But anyway, this is a very cool combination. So that's with Dragon Zord. You could sort of pretend they did something like this in the second season. This actually really looks good. It doesn't just look like a bunch of weird stuff thrown together. I guess had Tommy kept the Dragon Zord and they got the Thunder Zords, we could have seen something like this in the second season. And of course, this is not possible with the regular line. This is a Zord Builder thing. So, you know, there are pros and cons. Here is the second mystery black piece. What does this do? This is what you take and you plug it into the Firebird. The Firebird does not come with feet like the 94 version did but this is how you plug it in to the sled. And it does, it does stay in there. And then when you attach it to the tiger sword, the, the hand actually holds this piece and then this goes around here. So this goes in here, close his hand. Eh. When we had first gotten tiger sword, I was a little bit concerned about how they were going to do the firebird. They did a good job with that. He 
doesn't really want to drop it. Red Dragon Thundersword. How is his articulation? He can turn his arms all the way around. I am almost... Yeah, 100% positive this is not Zord Builder. If I pull any harder, I think I'll break it. Although, it's in there pretty good. I don't think I could break it if I wanted to. Okay, those are very much in there. Definitely not Zord Builder. No Zord Builder on the Red Dragon. Anyway, his arms right here, 360. His arm right here, also 360. He can do this, and then he can also do that. And of course, he can do that. And he can touch his head, even though Simon didn't say. And then his fingers also have articulation in two different places. And then his head can also turn 360. Usually a Megazord cannot turn his head. Okay, the feet can go like that and like that. Now the legs. One, two, three, four. I think a lot of people were expecting, given the posability of the neck and tail, that he would have very posable legs, but he actually doesn't. Um, like his, his legs can't move forward or back. And like you could have him sort of stand like that, but like the knees don't bend in half. So he could do that. Uh, you can turn his legs out, because these do turn 360. I don't know, some monster really messed him up. As far as bending his knees, this is what he does. So that there isn't any additional movement. Alright, for Red Dragon Thunderzord, this piece comes off. Like that. Which is a little different from this piece, which would actually fold that. There's a flap in the back which folds over once and then again. Turn his arms around. Now his arm splits in half and then you can kind of, uh, I guess, pose these as you want to. This part comes out and that's going to be for this piece. If you twist these, they will pop out, but they do pop in. Don't worry, you didn't break it. This attaches to the tail. Mouth can open. It's very hard to complain about this because this is what I've been asking for forever and they really did. It, it really looks unbelievable. But it is unfortunate that you can't pose the neck. I mean you can, but it's it's not going to stay like Titanus does. With Titanus you could actually pose. I'm not sure what happened here. You can do it a little bit, but uh, not like Titanus. Like that's just going to come right back down. You can have them like that, or you can move it up. If you want them like that, you're gonna have to use like a, one of these Tamashi stands. You could do something like that. It's a shame that he doesn't do it on his own, but there are those. Yesterday I showed you guys that these stands can support the Zords, and then people are arguing that they're a waste of money because they can't, but I'm showing you right now they can. Some positions won't work like that, it doesn't want to do, but you can do where the arms are and then just balance it and it'll work. There you go. But the more you play with it, you can get a better pose. I just did that very quickly. Oh, and then also these legs can be individually posed. You kind of have to hold on to this piece while you turn them so they don't pop out, but these can go all the way around from here to here. I still say if Premium Bandai in Japan were selling just this for like 150 bucks, people would still buy it. Once again, this is all painted and all the details are raised. They even got the red stripe around the feet. They really did an excellent job. Look at the difference on the face. The teeth and the mouth and the eyes. It, it really makes such a difference with the paint. The gold horns instead of the yellow. And you can move his tail like that way. He's still posable, just not quite like Titanus. I'm trying to give you guys a very fair and honest review, so I'm really going over everything. But I mean, overall, I still really, really love this. I really do. I think I said it's metal down here. This area here is metal. One of my favorite parts of the neck are the, the black areas with the, the texture. I'm not sure what you'd call that, but I really loved that on the show. It was just so incredibly satisfying for whatever reason, Titanus as well. And they totally got that. And they even did the black on the spikes. They even got the black in here, which they didn't hear. Really a lot of detail. He's smaller than the original version, but he's actually longer. It's kind of funny, isn't it? Another issue is I think the head could have stayed on a little bit better. On the original version, the head does stay on a bit better. Unless, yeah, on the legacy version, it does 
come off a lot easier. It's not going to just fall off if you look at it funny, but he's agreeing with me. There's definitely more detail molded into the horns on the Legacy. If you are as big of a Red Dragon Thunderzord fan as I am, I don't think you're ever going to have a chance to get a better one than this. And this is really good. All right, put him back. There's that. This piece might have attached a little bit easier on the original version. It just plugs in like that. And then on the original version, his jaw has to be down. And he goes in like that. So his knees could bend, but I'm not really sure what good that does you. Legacy Red Dragon is actually taller as well by like a tiny bit. They're like both a tiny bit. They're like both almost nine and a half inches tall, but he's like a tiny, like a hair taller. His head does not turn and his head does turn, which is really cool. Somebody did use the word brick for him and like, I'm really not sure how much more you can realistically expect. Once the lion's arms are extended like this, he's no longer Zord Builder compatible. But any Zord that has arm thingies like that, you could do. So for cases like that, it works. Or if you want to use the Tiger Zord's arms or uh, Super Mega Force might work. Okay, I get it, because he's a T-Rex and T-Rex had really short arms, right? So I guess this would be if he had human arms as a T-Rex. Yeah, that works. It would have to be either something like this or with the arm sitting on top of something. You know, like down here, they could plug in. They're not gonna be the most useful Zord Builder item, but they're not totally useless. They, they do some things. Maybe you guys can come up with some other ideas. Lion Zord is a bit different. The legs don't connect like they did before. In the original version, they do kind of peg together like that. Both of these are just balancing. They can both do it. His head comes down. And that's how you do it. There's a peg, and that goes in there, and that snaps in like that. It's different, but they both work. He is heavier, smaller and heavier. On the original version, this piece opened for the little figures to go into, which is really cool. And who doesn't love little figures? But when it's closed, it's too dark and that was like kind of where your eye was drawn on the original Thunder Megazord, right? It has this nice, big, bright... It's supposed to be a little more blue, like a little more bluish green, but still, this looks a lot better than it, than it did here. The red is now nice and painted. These stickers always want to start peeling and they look terrible. The helmet plugs in like that. This piece does come off. And there's another piece that can tuck in and that comes back out. And then that hooks on or pegs in to the back like that. So that is different. On the new version, he doesn't have to peg in because his head can turn. So it's not like locked in place. Red Dragon's head actually extends. And then once he's in Megazord mode, he can still move his head. That's really nice. Also look at the eyes. The eyes are actually molded and painted red with black around them. These were actually stickers that you had to apply and that was hard to do. I really don't miss the stickers on the Zords. Firebird Thunder Zord looks fantastic, but I hate to say it, this wing really likes to come off. This one hasn't come off, oh, I guess it does. These are removable, but this one is on a lot better. So I'm actually wondering if mine is defective because this side doesn't do that. I mean, you can take it off and it, it does go, has really nice movement and it, it has articulation here as well. So this is really great, except this really wants to fall off. And what makes it worse on this side is this is where the sword plugs into. So you really need this wing to be sturdier. There's hardly any metal on the Thunder Megazord. That's his tail. But these wings are on there. This is a metal piece. <clears throat> I kind of wish that they would uh, have made that a little sturdier. These pieces, <clears throat> yeah, these will come off, but they're not just gonna fall off. On this version, the wings will not go up any further though. 
which annoyed me because I, I wanted to uh, animate these and the wings do kind of do that on the show. They are able to get that movement, so that's nice, but uh, that's no good. See, it comes off really easy. Not this side. So maybe mine is just defective. This was the tail we got on the original and you can see that it had these power bolt stickers instead of this kind of nice design here. There's no pink on here, even though this is the Pink Ranger Zord. But we did get the pink and the proper markings. Looks about the same underneath. And I love that they did the black here, which they did not do on the original version. But oh, the wing thing, that, that is a bummer. That doesn't mean that the Thunder Megazord is not still really fantastic, because it is, but that that is a defect. And this little neck piece right here is metal, but I, I really wish the metal was in the wing. These don't look like feet, but they sort of serve the same purpose. So that will elevate him a little bit, and then, or her, and you can plug it in to the sled as well. And it only takes one of these figure art stands to support this. If you wanted to pose it and have them flying, you could. Don't underestimate the stands. They are not a waste of money. 20 bucks, you get three of them with uh, different heads and poles. So this was the Thunder Saber that we got. Just flimsy plastic. Pretty much all gray, except for the green here. Now we get this very pretty chrome blade. Silver up here, and they painted the handle. That's really, really nice. It's a great job on the sword. And then look at the difference with this piece. And yes, it does come with a chain. And this is all nice and painted. This is just this gold sticker with weird triangle thingies. Your black and gold edition Legacy Megazord will look pretty cool with the Thunder Megazord's legs. These pieces are removable. They actually molded the detail into the back of this. That's really cool. So these pieces, there is a right and a left. Right in this middle thingy here, it does say R and L, so you won't get them mixed up. I had these in Zord Builder mode, so these come down. And you plug these back in, twist his legs, and put his feet down. Transformation is just like on TV. Just lower him in there. Take our Firebird. Take off the tail, pull the wings, put the head back and he just clips on to the back where you see these two little clips. It's just like the first toy you had. There was no better way they could have done that, really. Take him apart, head comes down. All right, now these pieces here are like very flimsy, kinda. They scare me a little bit. And even like this piece up here, it, it is very bendy. Like in some areas they really do an unbelievable job and then other areas could be better. That just goes on. Lift his head up. The arms, this is really cool, the hands can rotate 360 and they can open. Silver on the back, red on the front. So that's how you know this is the front. Put his hands in here. This piece that attaches him to the Lion Thunder Zord can fold back into the helmet, lift up his visor. Now we have that and his head can turn. I really, really like the head turning. It's so unusual to have a Megazord that can spin his head around. So, you know, if you wanted to pose him a little bit. Now you can take his sword. There's also his staff, which does not come apart. It's one solid piece. This tailpiece plugs into the top. Actually, it probably could separate here, but I think it's glued. And then he can hold that. You can give him his sword. Not that he would hold these things both at once, but for demonstration purposes. Now, he does seem like he's leaning a little bit, unfortunately. Is there any way to get him to stop leaning? You can straighten him out, but honestly, I think the metal sort of messes these toys up a little bit, some of them anyway. I think there either has to be more or less, because when you just have the metal, so there's metal, then some things end up being heavier than others. Like, this doesn't have any metal, and it works perfectly. It doesn't need it. Except, where you really need it. <sighs> 23 years old is this? Had this for a while. Got this yesterday. You can sort of experiment with him and the legs and possibly give him some different poses. You have to do it carefully because the arms are heavy and you don't want to break your Red Dragon Thunder Zord. But you, know, you could sort of do something like that maybe. Like if you start extending all the pieces, it's gonna make him unsturdy. But kind of funny. You could even possibly put that down like that. You, you can't get poses like that out of him. That's about it. His head doesn't turn. 
Actually, this is pretty cool, isn't it? The fact that he's got a moving head really helps with, with making it cooler. The original just had holes in his hands and you just drop things in there. He can actually hold the things and he does hold them pretty well. So, I mean, there are some flaws with this. It's not perfect and it is expensive. But there are also things that are really, really great about it. So, I wish I could say, believe me, I wish I could say that it's 100% perfect and everybody needs to go spend $200 on it right now. I mean, it is really, really good. I just, I wish it didn't have the problems that it did. I may actually try to exchange mine to see if I can get a non-defective uh, Firebird. I still love this. I'm still so thrilled to have it, don't get me wrong. Like in this case, leaning forward actually helps it. Here, you can carry this like a purse. <laughs> if you did want to combine the original Zords with the Legacy White Tiger Zord, this is what you get. These, there's nothing for them to plug into. They will rest there. You just want to stick them on a shelf. He can sort of wear the legs. It's, you know, not really official, but sort of. It kind of works, but it's so-so. Also, for cleaning, um, a lot of people still want to know about dust. Here's a paintbrush. Just take your paintbrush, go like that. Totally getting, like, all of the dust. So that's one option that works. Here's a can of air that you get, like, in an electronics store. Fries, Best Buy, Staples, Office Max. Amazon. For more stubborn dirt, you could wet a toothbrush and then kind of, you know, so it's not too wet and then just kind of get in there. Plastic cleaner, soft cloth. This is all stuff that I've linked to in my various cleaning videos. I think I even have a whole playlist for stuff like that. It really does help if you want to keep your stuff looking shiny. He's almost 14 inches tall, and he's about 13 inches tall. I also thought I'd mention these have wheels as well on the back. The new ones do not. The new ones have some molded detail. These do not. So, uh, you know, depending on which one you have, they're both different. I like my stuff looking all shiny. He's usually on the top shelf, so I can't really see him very well. He is a little bit more poseable. These are gray, silver, and then on the original American version, they were black. I like colors. You are also able to stand him with his legs a little bit further apart like that, but when you do put them together, it's like they're not, he's not totally flat. He stands more flat on the floor. He's not really as posable. Like you can do that and he'll stay like that. Not so much over here. All right, I am exhausted if I don't look it. I think I've answered every question I saw on our YouTube comments and on Facebook. And also, if you do purchase your own, it will come with instructions. No Zord Builder in Red Dragon or Firebird. The green on the arms should be brighter, and I do wish that the, the head was even a little bit brighter as well on the lion. But still, really great. We have the Toys R Us rewards card thing that they offer, so 
We did save $10 on him because we had a $10 off thing. They also have sales every so often at Toys R Us. All right, I am gonna end here because I'm gonna fall asleep. So thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. I'll be back soon with many more good videos and good night.